Seagull. Nice. Enjoying the holiday? On your feet, the pair of you. You're supposed to be working. Here we come. I use your nouse. If the cops get a report on a stolen car, we're going to be done like a dinner, aren't we? What we got to do is just lie low for a while, OK? And then, as soon as things cool off, we're off. You see, doing this job is a bit like being a fighter pilot. Oh, get out. That's true. 99% boredom, 1% excitement. Oh, I find the human interest side of things quite exciting. It takes all kinds. I had a mate flew Spitfires, World War II. Five and a half years. How much action do you reckon he saw? How much? About 25 minutes. Oh, rubbish. Oh, you can scoff, mate. You can scoff. Well, you bet this'll be boring. If you got it in triplicate, all about Mrs. McGillicuddy's poodle. Hello, Des. Sergeant McGuinness. Yeah. Yeah, just a sec. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, good. Right, yeah. Right, got it. Thanks very much. Thank you. That uh, didn't sound too boring. I think you're in, son. What do you mean? Stolen car. Two blokes seen driving off in it. One closely resembling the description given of David John O'Connell. I think we've got him. Now, what's the matter with you? I've just given you the biggest scoop of the month. We've got the Devlin place staked out. All you've got to do is keep an eye on it and hope they're stupid enough to turn up. Yeah. Stuff and put it in the bin. Yeah, yeah, you know. Want to play a game? What? Let's see who can get the closest. Oh, right, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, you missed. Oh, oh I nearly got it. That oh, was look mine. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't chuck stuff in the water anyway. What, stones? No, tins and stuff. Can you swim? Not much. You can fetch it if I chuck in. <sighs> you wouldn't try it. Oh, I reckon you could beat me, eh? Maybe. I used to do stuff like this when I was a kid. Well, beat the boys up. Yeah, that too. No, chuck stones at stuff in the river. Yeah? But we didn't used to use beer cans. We used to use lemonade bottles. Used to try and break them. Huh? No one ever did, of course. Except once. This girl called Brenda did it, a real beauty. She smashed it to smithereens. <laughs> then we all had to give her threepence each. It was pennies in those days. She must have collected two and six. <sighs> Anyhow, we all forgot about it then. Until a few weeks later when I went back to have a swim. 
and I nearly cut me foot off on the glass. See? So you shouldn't chuck stuff in the river. I never thought about it. Well, you've got to think about other people, don't you? Yeah, I suppose you do. Oh, nothing. Don't give me that. What is it? Come on, hand it over. Oh! What's wrong? Oh, it's this pain in me bladder. I was just taking that specimen down to Dr. Miller. Well, you might have told me. Oh, I just did. Well, there's an awful lot of it. Look at the colour. I told you I was crooked, didn't I? Well, by the look of this, you should be in your cell lying down. I'll take it to surgery. Oh, don't you think the doc should see me? He won't be in till this afternoon. Do you feel fit enough to work? No, not really, Miss Bennett. I wouldn't think so. Report to this afternoon's sick call. Yes, Miss Bennett. He doesn't have a ghost of a chance. I know. If he gets caught within a square mile of Pat's place, she'll get done for harbouring, right? Unless they catch him before they actually make contact. She'll have a pretty good case then. What if they wait till he's in the house before they spring the trap? You're just assuming that he will go there. Well, don't you think he will? <laughs> I'd go myself, except Pat's not going to take a blind bit of notice of anything I have to say. And there's no way Mrs Devlin's going to let me near the place. All right, I'll come with you. Oh, Greg. Hi. Hi. I've got to go out for a while. Oh, Pat O'Connell's in terrible trouble. Karen, your place is here, not gallivanting around helping second-rate journalists scoop the opposition. Now, just a minute. That's not fair, Greg. We've good reason to believe that Pat O'Connell's son's on his way there right now, and that's what the police are waiting for. We've got to get to her and warn her before she ends up back inside. Which is exactly what will happen to you if you start getting mixed up in it. We can't sit here and let it happen. Come on, Alex. You take one step outside that door and I'll phone the police. I'm not kidding, Karen. Hey, Con, what's the time? Would never clue. He's a bit late, isn't he, the doc? Yeah, I reckon. Well, what do you think's holding him up? Oh, wouldn't it rot you? What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. You wouldn't want to change places with me, would you? No way. I'll make it worth your while. Yeah? All right. You're on. <laughs> All right, who's first? Hang on just a minute. Oh, oh. What's, what's wrong? Me appendix, I think it's back. Oh, God, that's all I know. Give me a hand, oh. you two. Oh. 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 oh, you little beauty. Understand you, Greg. You're perfectly happy to just sit there and let Pat go back to jail for harbour. I simply don't want to see you going back to jail, that's all. Besides, if the situation's as desperate as you say it is, I doubt that there's anything anyone can do at this stage. We can't just sit here and let it happen. It's going to happen, whatever we do. And that solves your conscience, does it? Well, it's not good enough for me, not good enough at all. I think Dr. Miller's right, Karen. Do you just? Yes. That's big of you, Mr. Fraser. What about your story? Look, Doctor, I don't deny that this story could... well, could set me up for good. But honestly, I'm far more interested in Karen and Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. It's OK. Well, glad to see that you two have solved the world's problems. Are oh, you being unreasonable, Karen? Am I? 
Look, I don't care what either of you say. I'm going. Karen! 